Dr. Anthony Fauci is front and center in the new administration's drive to tackle COVID. This morning, he talks with senior contributor Ted Koppel. We're going to be starting this piece, Tony, with an interview that you and I did 33 years ago. Really? When Dr. Fauci and I first met on camera, remote interviews were still something of a novelty, and the nation was fixated on a global epidemic called HIV AIDS. What degree of optimism do you have about some kind of vaccine? Two vaccines uh, are in phase one trial to determine safety, but it won't be until well into the 1990s. If we're lucky enough to have a vaccine, it won't be at least until 1995. Even 33 years ago, Tony Fauci had a wide national following, but mostly among AIDS activists who were often highly critical. And to the best of my recollection, he had not yet inspired any videos, T-shirts, coffee mugs, or suggestions of impending sainthood. Oh my goodness. A little more pensive. My, uh, my nuns in the Lady of Guadalupe in, yeah, in Brooklyn so, would, yeah, would be <laughs> turning over in their grave when they see that. And then, and then of course, we have, we have the other kind. In case you can't read it from all the way over oh, there. No. <laughs> Say no to the prick, it says. I believe Dr. Fauci has um, manufactured the coronaviruses. You know, Ted, I think this is a dramatic example of the divisiveness in our country. We've had a complete distortion and throwing aside of scientific facts and evidence. And a certain part of the country believed the hoax aspect, the fake news aspect. The other half was longing for clarity, longing for facts, longing for truth. So for better or worse, for one reason or other, I became a symbol that was unrealistic, like St. Anthony. You know, it's kind of, okay, great, but that's not reality. On the other hand, I've had people who have threatened my life because I'm speaking public health measures. We've got some video, Tony, of you and your wife walking with a security detail. It came to that. Yeah. Yeah, it came to that. I've triggered such animosity that I have to have federal agents, armed federal agents with me, like, all the time. Your children have been threatened. I have to tell you, I, I'm not afraid of myself, for myself, but the thing that really is disturbing to me is the harassment, continual harassment, of my three daughters. The crazies, you know, know who they are, know where they live, know what their telephone number is, know where they work. It infuriates me. Let's talk about us, America. Here we are. We've got 4% of the world's population. There have been 2 million fatalities worldwide. If we had our share, we would have had 80,000. Right. That's a lot. We have five times that number. Right. We've been an abject failure, Tony. Mm. Yeah. Um, the, the reasons for that, Ted, I don't think I, I can articulate all of them, but some of them stand out to me because I've lived through them. You can't have mixed messaging. You cannot have the politicization of public health messages. I mean, the idea that wearing a mask or not became a political statement, that makes it beyond difficult to implement a good public health measure. Dr. Fauci said there is no magic drug for coronavirus right now, which you would agree. I guess on this issue, well, well, you, know, you have a very expressive face, and there is a moment you will know instantly what I am talking about in the press room at the White House. I want you to reveal finally what was going through your head during that briefing. Well, the one I think you're referring to is when we were in that situation where we were talking about hydroxychloroquine. It may work, may not work. Uh, 
I feel good about it. That's all it is, just a feeling. I, you know, I'm a smart guy. And he was up there talking about it, and I just, I, I think I went, I went like that. Yes. <laughs> I'd like him to go back to the State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department. You know, my... I instinctively I like did, and I just sort of was saying to myself, oh, my God. And unfortunately, that became the picture that rocketed around the world. People have come to a point where they don't understand this about President Trump. He can actually be an extraordinarily charming man. Yes, you're right. He, he's a charismatic person. I got along very, very well with him, but I took no pleasure in having to correct clear misrepresentations in the sphere of medicine and science. Uh, I'm not totally sure of what the, the president was referring to. That annoyed, I think, his staff, his loyal staff, in some respects even more than it annoyed him. So that's when things started to go the wrong direction. And he's got this high approval rating, so why don't I have a high approval rating with respect, and the administration, with respect to the virus? So the relationship became a bit frayed, and then when I would see him in the Oval Office, he would act like everything was fine. And then we had that famous time when people were chanting, fire Fauci, fire Fauci, and he said, well, that's not a bad idea. I think I'll, I'll do that. Don't tell anybody, but let me wait till a little bit after the election. <laughs> now, he's been wrong on a lot. He's a nice man, though. He's been wrong on a lot. With more consistent leadership, we could have saved a lot of lives. Is that a fair statement? You know, I believe so. I mean, I, I think if we had had the public health messages from the top right through down to the people in the trenches be consistent, that things might have been different. In fact, I'm pretty sure they would have been different. And I'm going to just spend a couple of minutes just uh, summarizing the status of where we are. It is uh, a measure case. of Tony Fauci's durability that at the age of 80, he has just taken on a new title, working for Joe Biden, his seventh president. You're now the chief medical advisor, right? Right. So what we're going to be seeing over the next months is much more of a coordinated, synergistic partnership between the federal government and the states. So I believe we're going to see a turnaround in attitude when the federal government and the states start working together as opposed to you're on your own. Yeah, but you've been talking already and you have experienced to your own regret the poison of the partisanship that exists. Right. That's not going away, Tony. Well, no, it's not. We're, we're averaging now around two to 300,000 infections a day, about three to 4,000 deaths per day. I mean, you have to look at those numbers and say, we've got to do something different. Your first great challenge is going to be able to get the vaccines in the arms. Right now, Things are getting better, but they're going to get much better because President Biden has made it very clear this is his top priority. You know the goal that's been set, which I believe is entirely achievable, is to have a hundred million people vaccinated in the first hundred days. Both vaccines? Primary and boost, yes. Primary and, and boost, boost. Yeah. in a hundred days. Yes, yes. You realize you're setting yourself up for disaster if you don't meet that goal. Of course. And that's one of the things that uh, was kind of refreshing in one of the first briefings that we had with President Biden and Vice President Harris is that he said w we might have setbacks, but you know when that happens, what we're going to do is we're not going to point fingers. We're not going to blame people. We're not going to hide anything. We're going to be totally transparent and honest, and we're going to try and fix it. We've had four years, Tony, of, from the top, undermining confidence in all of our institutions, intelligence, the FBI, the media, science. That's been a pandemic of its own kind, hasn't it? It has, and we've got to repair it. We have to, because the country's at stake. 
You got any thoughts for how to begin? There's no vaccination for it. No, there's no vaccination, but I think maybe we have to keep showing by example that being united is much, much better than being divisive because divisiveness has really failed. I mean, it has failed us in every single way.